share a little bit about you guys. It wasn't like we just jumped into real estate and we were like wildly successful right off the bat. Absolutely not. Both of us had full-time jobs. Um, she worked in mortgage as a mortgage supervisor. I was a personal trainer up in Hunt Valley. So it was, it was not convenient for us to do this. And anybody who makes it sound like flipping houses is super easy and you can do this part-time is, is pretty much... Lying. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not... Could you do it? I'm not going to say definitively ever. You could never do it, right? I'm just going to give you the realistic version of it that it's not realistic, right? Um, so yeah, we had full-time jobs. Um, you know, Jennifer would basically spend her afternoons searching for homes, right? So she'd work all day. She'd spend her afternoons, evenings searching for homes all the time. Um, and I would basically, this is the hardest thing. Everyone who in here who is a realtor and has no job or did that, it's the most frustrating, annoying thing in the world when you're with somebody working on something, but you're thinking about that, mm -hmm. right? So I would be with clients, and, and I probably should write them all letters, I apologize, because they did not be good service for me. Because I would be thinking about real estate the whole time. I'd be thinking about flipping houses. Um, so with that said, you know. By the end, I was, I was running Taylor Properties pretty much eight hours a day behind my mortgage desk. So, but they were fine with it. I mean, they didn't even bother you with it, right? Yeah, but I, it, it wasn't fair. So. Yeah, once again, yeah. short change in the company. We were fine yeah. with it then. It's kind of sad now. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, even, okay. So kind of like a yeah. funny story of how we even got our first house, right? So it wasn't like we had done all this super crazy research and we did all our homework and, man, we just knew it. Like, this was the one. No, I kid you not. So one day, Jennifer comes home. And just like you would probably, like, after work, you would stop by, I don't know, Target, right? you pick up whatever loaf of bread or, you know, some napkin, paper towel, whatever. She just comes home and she's like, hey, babe, how's it going? I'm like, yeah, it's going good. You know, I she's was like, super nervous. Super you? nervous, yeah. She just comes home and she's like, oh, yeah, I just stopped by and I uh, just bought a house. Like, kid you not, literally. And I'm like, sounds like you said I just bought a house. I haven't even seen it yet. I haven't even seen it yet. Totally. No, I give her that. She, her whole family is in real estate. Like that was something that was very natural to her, and I gave her that that freedom. Like, it didn't really shock me. It was just funny. Like, literally, most people come home and, hey, I picked this up from the store. I kid you not, it was just like that. Like, hey, I actually just picked up blank blank on Smith Street. Yeah, you know? and he said go ahead and buy whatever you want. I don't think he really thought I would do it. <laughs> there were implications of that. Yeah, right, there right. were implications. Of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything you want to add to that? So then also, <laughs> right. so then, what do you mean you just bought a house? Do you mean you wrote an offer on a property? What do you really I bought mean? A hub sale. She bought a Hubsy property, saw online. Yep. Uh -huh. So, so online. you had been bidding on it, not really discussing it. Right. Like I said, I had given her that that freedom. But yeah, like literally, I did not know she bought the house. So that's just, you know. I mean, know. he knew I was looking for him, right? So it's only a matter of time. Right, right. right. Um, and then, so we did that for a while. We got that first house. Um, I think we realized by the second one that we needed to either be realtors or we had to, we better be working with one extremely closely. We had one, but like if you know Jen, my wife here, be kind. Or or Jen. Be kind. So we all have like strengths, right? We all have qualities that we're like really really good at. And then there's like qualities that we just don't own. Okay. And Jen can't own uh, patience. She doesn't have any. It just she can't do it. So working with a realtor literally like drove us nuts. Yeah. Like that's all. It I mean, we would literally see a property, and what we want to do is see the property. Let's go see it now. Or I'm going to send someone to go see it, right? But back then it was see a property. Oh, we got to call up. And his name was Phil. Hey, Phil, do you think we can get in to see this property? Oh yeah, I'll try to set up a showing. Might be a couple hours. Oh, we can get in maybe tomorrow. Wrong. Too to too long already. Right? We've already missed the opportunity. Then, oh, I gotta write a contract. Well, I'm busy, guys. I gotta, like. Well, and then if we had to send a contractor back, then I had to set up the other showing. Yeah. Um, so it felt like you were almost doing like 10 times the work when you're like, dude, if I am this person, I'm just gonna knock it out. And then if I wanted to, him to write a contract, I usually wait a day to get the contract. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you guys know how the market is right now. You've got to be like on a snap. Like, you need to have it yeah. submitted within hours, not days. It's true. Right? Like, get on it. Or have someone for your team. If it's too much for you, like, you're like, dude, I just can't do that. Like, have someone on your team who can. Maybe it's a new, you know, a new realtor or somebody who doesn't have that much time and they're adding a ton of value to you, um, or they do have more time. They're adding a ton of value to you because they can do that for you, right? We all know what, how important leverage is here, right? I mean, that's everything. Um, so even, but to, to piggyback off that story, um, literally we're just sitting with some friends over at our townhouse at this time, 
And I think just out of the blue, Jen's like, man, you should be licensed, Jonah. Like, not even herself. She's like, you should be licensed, Jonah. <laughs> and within like two hours, did you not? She has it. She purchased it in my name, and like, we're going over the courses again. And then the whole patience thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> patience for him to decide to no. become an agent. No. Just, I do it for you. <laughs> and um, I, think, I think part of it, I actually did do for him. Totally. He was so against it in the beginning. I just didn't, that, I didn't have a heart for it yet. You know how, like, the online classes, like, they're the little slides, I had to read out loud to him <laughs> the <laughs> modules for yeah. him to learn. Yeah. And I was actually like, clicking the answers for the test. You know, I'd ask yeah. him the question, he'd give me the answers, I'd pick his answer. Yeah. That's how we, he got it. I'm an extremely unqualified realtor. That's <laughs> <laughs> So between doing those two, that takes quite a bit of time. So Jennifer and I are huge advocates is like, I want to be a great dad. I also want to be a great husband. I want to be a great friend. Those things also take time, right? You're not going to be those if you're not present. So also time is very important to us. So we could do more flips. At this point with the people we have on our team, that's where we're at. But I mean, we're extremely honored to be here right now because out of 500 agents in this office, how did we get picked to be the ones that teach? I know other people are flipping. Right? I know we're not the only ones flipping here, so I just want you to know that we're very honored. It's our privilege to be here. And also, I, I'm, I mean, we prepared pretty good. We wanted to make sure that you guys got, like, the stuff, mm -hmm. right? And even if we only have an hour, you know, give you guys the goods. What we thought were the most, so we picked three things, the most three critical concepts that you have to know. Um, so that's what we're going to go over today. There's three concepts. Um, anything you want to add to? Yeah, and just to repeat, it, like what he was saying, the future goal is the workshop. So if after this class is over, if you guys like what you heard, want to learn more, um, <coughs> would think it's valuable to have a longer class, definitely tell Mike Z and Jen yeah. and Lori and see if we can put something together. And that, Jen, real quick, the first pass you bought on Hubzu, was that the one in Jensen? Yeah. That the one? yeah. Yep. So that was also a really profitable deal, right? Yes. Yeah, so you're going to see, we're going to okay. show you that deal today. Okay. So we're going to walk through our very first flip ever, and it's how you follow what we're saying, because we followed what people were saying to us, how literally on your very first flip it can be a successful one. However, we've also, as we told Jeanette, we've lost just as much, right? There, for every, I would say, success that we've had, we've seen an equivalent blunder. Now that's probably on us, right? I would, I would say if you guys attended the classes, you wouldn't have to make those. It wouldn't, you wouldn't have to do that, right? So, you know, but that's why... Don't mess up. Yeah, yeah, stop messing up so much, dang it. Um, yeah, so, but also, this is our way, right? This is how we do it. Is this the only way to flip houses? No. If you wanted to do it a different way, uh, you probably could. I mean, you could probably flip it completely by yourself. But I don't know if that would really be flipping a house anymore. That's pretty much like homeownership. I mean, yeah. just, we're all doing that, I guess. Fixing up our own home, right? Um, but we've had a lot of mentors, and uh, that's where we take that information, we apply it, and if it works for us, that's what we're sharing. So it's not just stuff that we think. This is stuff that's been passed down to us. This is stuff that we've tested or disproved, and uh, we're going to share it with you guys. So uh, first thing then, okay, so the first concept are the three key roles that you're going to have to have a flip a house, right? Uh, so let's just start with the most basic one. These are the partners that you want to have working with you. Okay. So a realtor, right? I think everybody in here is an agent. Or do we have anybody in here that's not no. an agent? No. Everybody's an agent? No. Okay. Besides no. Brian back there? Okay. No. So for those of you who aren't agents, right, this just means that well, I still obviously <laughs> soak this up, right? Like, crush this. However, just understand the importance of either someday, maybe that becomes an option, or two, become excellent friends, partnership with someone who has the same interests as you. Because if they don't care about it like you care about it, it's not going to work. 
they're not they're not gonna have the same investments you're gonna have. They're not gonna be on your timeline. So it needs to be somebody that like your literally like your mom or something. It needs to be someone that close to you. You know, the other part of having it's not just you being the real estate agent either. Joe and I partner with other agents that bring us deals. Right. And we allow them to take the buy commission, mm -hmm. and in certain cases, we allow them to take the list commission sure. because if they bring a good deal, we wouldn't have had it otherwise. Exactly. <laughs> That's the case with one of the homes we have literally right now. Um, and some people would, would disagree with this, but yeah, because we're realtors, right? I mean, why would we have someone else buy and sell our house, right? But I wouldn't have got the deal if he didn't. So he bought it, he got a great deal on it, he showed it to us, we said, yep. And now he's also going to list it for us. So it's, sometimes you got to get creative. It's not, flipping is not black and white, right? It's not cut and dry. And if you want to be good at it, just like being a realtor, you can't do the same crap that everybody's doing. You have to do some things different, right? So the first thing, yeah, is being a realtor. Now, why would you need a realtor? Because someone's got to buy the houses. Could you buy them off market? True, maybe, but you're going to flip like five houses at max. Like that's, It's so much work to do everything off market. Um, you also need someone to sell your houses, right? You could try FISBO them, right? I sell them on your own. Would. I hope nobody would do that in here because you understand your own worth, right? Like you understand that having it on the MLS you know, getting it out to as many people as you possibly can, you know. Not like, to mention holding time when you're flipping. You, you've got to be conscious of how long you have that property. If you're going to fit well, you need to account for another 60 days probably in the market, if not longer. Yeah, so now it's not even worth it. Now yeah, you're just right. giving money to the other way. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, do yourself a favor. And flipping is about time, right? It's about speed, right? You can have an income property, and that's where you keep it, right? But a, a good rental, most of the time, 99% of the time, is a good flip, and a flip is a good rental. Just matters if you have the financing or if you can refinance it, uh, you know, through a lender or whatnot. Um, so yeah, the realtors are going to help you see houses. They're going to help you get a showings. They're going to help you do all that. Now you guys are all that person, so that's fantastic, right? But just know that you're already on your way then. You already have one piece of the flipping puzzle, and there's only two other pieces, right? So then the next one you have to have is a contractor. Yep. And once again, this is no bum of a contractor. Like if you want your company to be lousy, then go ahead and hire anybody. Oop, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hire anybody. No. Um, like we know through career visioning, like you want the best people. Treat this the same freaking way, right? This is how you build a great team by making sure that you, the realtor, are the best, right? Or if you're not, you're working with best. Your contractor, once again, has to have that same relationship, right? Where you can call them up at 9 o'clock because the pipes burst at your house because it was 14 below degrees, and you are you don't want to go, right? It's not you. You call him. You have to be able to do that. If you can't do that, then either you don't have a strong enough relationship, right, or you need to find somebody else. So, and I don't mean that so, so aggressively because obviously relationships take time to build, right? But that's where you should be heading is find somebody who you can... You know. It's all about leverage. So you yeah. have somebody on your team that you are able to leverage. You yeah. know? So for instance, like with our contractor, like Jonah said, I can call him at 9, 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night if I needed to, yeah. and send him somewhere, and he will go. Yeah. Um, we yeah. just had, luckily, you know, it was in the gut phase of the house, but pipes burst. And one of our houses up in Towson. And I don't want that phone call. Like, yep. literally, I'm not, that's that's me just saying, like, I don't want that person to call me. And it's as easy as me sending a text message to him saying that this pipe burst, go check it out, and he's up there within 30 minutes. Speak a minute on quality versus cost, mm -hmm. because a lot of times people who are flipping think that it's all about reducing that's the amazing. cost. Amazing. Thank Great you question. for bringing that up. The other thing with the contractor, Jonah brought it up, that you want a quality person. How many people in here have been in a flip? Where you can just tell that they were yeah. handy. A lousy fuck. Yeah. On everything. Can I raise my hand five times? Yeah. But here's the thing it looks right. It looks right in pictures, right in pictures yeah. but you walk into it and you can tell that they didn't spend their time. Yeah. So, and how many of you have been in a flip where it's just immaculate? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. There is a cost difference, but there's also a resale difference. Oh yeah. And oh, yeah. you know, I'm not going to put addresses out there, but there were, we just sold a house. Where we sold for thirty-four thousand dollars more than the guy down the street. And it was a flip. And it was a flip. Yeah, but and the person across the street told you never get it. Yeah, and, and the neighbor told us that we never get it, but yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But, but that's it's, a, it's a difference in quality. 
You know, we yes. had an agent that had shown that house, come to our house, and was just hands down. Yeah. Could tell the difference. In fact, it was so funny because we literally had to replace the main in the front. So, like, the house itself is gorgeous, but there's, like, a huge dirt pit in the front. It looks like we're trying to bury somebody. And they still bought the house. They still bought the house. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually told them, I'm like, you probably should wait a couple days. Like, don't go see it right now. It's a hazard. Uh, and they're like, well, we, should, we live right next door. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, we're fine. And so, yeah, they still buying yeah. yeah. But you can, you can, people can tell the quality of the work that your contractor does, which is why it's so important to yeah. get the right person on your team that cares a much, as much about the property as you do. Yeah. And cares about how much money you're going to make as much as right. what they're doing. We try to have those relationships so we can find deals at all times. We're not just uh, handcuffed to, well, we can only handle three or four at a time. Well, we got four, we're done. And our relationship with him is a partnership. You know, We want him to invested. make money with us so that he's invested with us. Yeah. So we help him, and then he turns around, he helps us. And one great way to do that, guys, is to pay people out of the profit. Instead of paying them a salary, pay them out of the profit, because that way he's only going to get paid if there is a profit. Gotcha. And I know some of you are going, well, that sounds really hard to do. If he's a good contractor, he'd glad to do it, because he's used to making profit. So that's something that, in the beginning, you're going to rely extremely heavily on the general contractor, right? Because when you're walking through and you see a kitchen that needs to be gutted and stairs that need to be moved and tiles that need to be pulled up and a backsplash that has to go on and the electrical has got to be, you know, redone, uh, you have no idea, right? I mean, I'll be honest with you. Even I still don't have a full idea what that. But that's why I need him, and that's why it's so important to have a guy like that is to make sure that, really, you're, you have a mentor at all times. Right? So it's so cool because I get to do this. Like when someone calls me and they go, hey, what's wrong with the furnace? It's making this noise. I'm like, cool, let me call somebody. And I just call him and he goes over there. Right? And if I want to, you know, if, if, if it's, you know, one of those scenarios where it, it's more about customer service, I can just call him and be like, hey, man, what's going on with this? Did you take a look at it? Call them back and give them a very expert answer, even though I'm not the expert. So what we do is we, we work on draw schedules with our contractor. So we give them an upfront draw. And that gets the job started, gets materials ordered, gets the like labor guys paid. Sure. Like a one-third type. Yeah. yeah, like a one-third, you know, whatever he needs. He usually tells me, you know, what's needed to get the job started. We'll write him a check for that. Yep. Um, then, you know, after that, phase two begins. He'll ask me for another draw or more money for X, Y, or Z. Give him that. Um, so the subs are paid throughout. The only person that doesn't get paid is him and it's because it's out of profit yeah. now we've done it the other way where we have given him you know draws as well for his pay but what we found out by doing that is that now they don't they no longer have an interest on whether you make money or right. if you lose money right. they don't care because right. they're still getting paid in fact it even goes the opposite <laughs> way because he gets paid regardless whether there's a profit or not so his interest isn't even the same as ours we want to get the job done as fast as possible, right? And with top quality, uh, with the biggest profit. But that's not his concern. He doesn't care if it gets done fast. In fact, if it takes longer, he probably makes more money. Now I have a contractor who I love and trust, but we don't even agree the same thing. So paying him on the profit, we found, and this was actually straight from our mentor, because he basically told us that we were doing it wrong. He said, pay him on the profit, and that way it ensures that you're going to be profitable. And that way, so now we offer him a percentage of every flip. He takes the percentage of that, and that's how he gets paid. And if he does really well, he makes really good money. If it's a so-so flip, he still gets paid for his time. Where, where do you want to be at? Like, choose your community that you want to look in and start looking for flips around that area, yeah. right? Call if you can search the owner, see if you can figure out the contact information for the owner. <clears throat> you know, if you see people outside the job site, stop by and say, who, you know, who's right. the GC for the job, yeah. who's performing the work here. Yeah. And kind of do your research that way. That way, if, if the GC is there, you can say, well, hey, you know, I've got a job. Can I take a look at your work? Right. You know, he'll probably call the owner and see if it's sure. okay to walk through. And nine times out of ten, they don't care. Right, um, right. I don't care. Well, and general contractors will always know, I shouldn't say always, once again, other general contractors. So if you run into one and he's just not in your area or anything like that, that's the perfect guy to ask. You know, hey, do you know anyone else who could help me? i got a property that I've been really interested in, but I need this contractor. Um, just like we know what a realtor is, right? Um, so just to finish up on this, though, the re another reason why contractors are so important is not only uh, because they have all that knowledge, but this is the most time-consuming one. Out of all, the other one that I'm going to tell you in a second 
this is by far the most time consuming one. It requires you to be on site often. If there are problems, drop what you're doing, go back to the site. Right? All those phone calls that you get, because there are, there's like 30 trades that end up going through a house from beginning to end, and every single one of those trades needs direction. Right? So somebody has to field, observe, correct, inspect, all that stuff. And you can be the contractor. That's fine. But you're not going to have time to do any type of scale or anything like that because you're, you're just going to be really tied down to your uh, getting your permits. Always, 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 always getting your permits. That That's a blunder for the next workshop that we'll share. And it, it costs us dearly. Um, because that's actually a marketing thing that you can use at the end. Or I mean, say you didn't get your permits. And somebody calls you and says, hey, I have a client who's super interested in your house, right? Can you show me the permits? Uh, I don't think this is for them, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I see a nice one over there. The street. That they should go look at. Yeah, but so, and, and it just feels good, right? Yeah. Doesn't it like when someone says, hey, do you got your permits? Here. And you're like, bam! They're on the counter. I got <laughs> permits for you. What do you want? Which one do you want? Building, one like this? You know, uh, it just feels good. And you know you're doing a good job. And at the end, too, even in your repairs, <laughs> this shows up again. Because most people don't get permits because they think it saves money, right? But like, oh, it's gonna cost too much money if I get permits, it's gonna cost me time. Wrong. It'll cost you way more. It'll cost you way more to not give. Uh, all right, so then the third one that you gotta have is an investor, right? Or your money guy. Um, He's got it good. Yeah, so this guy is, is really the one that I think we all want to be, he's also obviously the hardest one to be, right? He's the one who's got so much money that he doesn't even know what to do with it anymore. He doesn't feel like flipping houses because that's a little risky, right? So he, and he's probably done it for a while or something else and he's made his money. So now he's gonna charge you a boatload to you know, borrow his money. Um, you know, so, because obviously, unless you have, <laughs> right, right, you know, you know, unless you have, yeah, you know, $100,000 sitting in the bank for a, a, a small purchase, and another hundred grand for a, a, a small reno, you know, and that would I would say hundred grand would do a decent reno. It's not going to do you know a ton. And then whatever buying holding, well, I get you in holding, but selling costs, you know, yeah, you're going to need like on the on the low end, you would need two hundred fifty grand just cash, just ready to grab. Yeah. So this guy, okay. So now here's the wisdom though. <laughs> These are the three that you need, right? Now try to be one of them, but don't try to be all of them. You're already this one. Right? Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane, that's right. <laughs> be that one, because you already are. If you're not, try to be one of these, right? If you're not the realtor, then maybe you are here. And if you're not that, then I would love for you to be here. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you if Give you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, don't try to be all three. That's more, that's I'm just going to take you way too long, way too much stress. You're going to have all your money tied, uh, tied up, all your time tied up, and then you're also on the hook. Remember, so, it's all about leverage. You want to get in and out as fast as possible without uh, sacrificing quality. Right, right, so, exactly. So what, there's a few people in this room that aren't realtors, so what right. about them? Yeah, so I would say in this case, maybe it's possible to down the road think about being this, right? If they wanted to, um, they could become this one, right? These are both just, just licenses. This one doesn't require a license. To be successful. So, that's why it's hard. <laughs> so I would say you're really left to be one of these two, or like I said, if you can't, be best friends with one of these two right here. In my opinion, this is the easiest one to be. All you, you already are. Most of you are in here already are. Right? You're already doing one of the first. Yeah. Um, okay. So man, we're, we're, we're losing time here. Jenny, want to jump into the second? Or did I forget anything? Miss anything? No, I think you got it all. Okay. Um, so money. Talk money. Talk money. Um, so the first thing that you know, I thought you guys would have questions on is like, where do I get money from, right? Yeah. Right. Everybody got that question. Well, we just assumed you were going to get it. To right. Us. Right. Right. And at the end of the class, everyone gets hundred. <laughs> so um, this is where you got to get creative with how you finance these deals, because um, of course there's private money, and that's how most people do it. Who don't have the money in their pockets to do it. So private money or hard money. So yeah. um, hard money lenders, they're not as elusive as they used to be. Even a couple years ago when Joan and I got started, 
in 2013-14. Yeah. It was harder to find them. You know, there's hard money bankers. You know, in Columbia, I think they're still in Columbia. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, and there's a few other that. There's quite a few. Them. I actually spent an entire day yeah. finding ways to find cheaper money, and there's like 30 of them. Yeah, there's. You 30. just Google it; they're yeah, out there, yeah. but they're yeah. not going to be kind to you. They're not yet. They're, no. It's it's hard money. Yeah. And you're going to expect to uh, steal the property pay, like, I don't know, three points, 13% interest. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And that's not uncommon. That that's is totally okay, normal. Wait. Now, I have to tell you Brian <laughs> just got my son 10.5% on yes. interest only payment. So it can't be done. It can be done. Can't All be right, done. Brian, there you go. He's, he's not so hard you, money. If, yeah. you're, if you're experienced, I mean, I can get it as low as seven nine nine. All right, yeah. See, so that would be soft money. Yeah. <laughs> we like soft money. Yeah. Well, and that leads into the next. Right. So then there's soft money. So soft money is going to be your rich Uncle Sam, right? right? Well, I should say Uncle Frank because Uncle Sam's not giving you anything. Right. right. Yeah, that's true. Um, rich Uncle Sam is not giving you anything. Rich Uncle Frank. You know, so we have a guy that we use a lot too. He's a family friend that did well as an attorney, and he'll lend us money. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you've got anybody in your family or any connections through family, family friends, yeah. relatives, or whatnot, start asking the question, like, who do we know in our family that's rich? Yeah, and that's really, I mean, that's really funny. But they're going to lend a lot easier, right? They're going to be a lot softer because they probably want to see you succeed too. Right, so I, that's where I would start. Like, if we had to start all over again today, and I, and I did this too, I just went through my whole phone. And literally, anyone I thought that either had money or access to money, I just called them and said, hey, you know, kind of like we do with our expires and our business, like, you know, hey, do you know anybody who would be interested in, in working with me and anybody who would want to maybe partner up on some of these deals? And that's how we found a couple of our guys. Yeah. So we just started at home. Yeah, and the incentive to them is that they're doing nothing. They don't need to be on your job site. No. You don't want them on your job site. You really don't. Right. You do they not. Opinions. Yeah. You know, um, so they just get to sit back, relax, and hopefully if you get it done in four months, they're getting you know, their money over the course of four months and you know, do it again. It's easy. Um, the other thing, you know, and this is this is something that we use to get started. By no means are we got, are we telling you guys to use debt. Um, you have to be right. very responsible <clears throat> in order to use debt. <laughs> Um, but to get us started, I think I mentioned that we underestimated our first deal by about 50 grand. Yeah. So in order to get the job done, I had to come up with it somehow. And we didn't have it. Yeah. Like yeah. the banks did. <laughs> Luckily, personal lines of credit came into play, and Home Depot was <coughs> mine. Yeah. And you know, getting creative with certain debt because as long as you're smart about it and you know what the resale is and you know what your value is going to be and you know what you, how your numbers work out, they're getting paid off in a matter of months. Right. All right, and then yeah. you can reuse it. So yeah. to leverage, you can use debt. Um, yeah. A lot of, you know, even hard money lenders, you know, I think our first guy, you know, he didn't even care where the money came from to closing. He didn't care. He didn't want bank statements. Yeah. He pulled my credit report. That's it. He didn't, he, I, I, and I even asked him, I'm like, so if I, Pull, you know, five grand from a personal line of credit to use that, you know, for closing. Do you care? No, that's on you. Um, yeah, because they're yeah. asset based lending. They care about the house and the numbers. They don't care about where you get the money yeah. from. So However, we're not disclosing go out and use debt. Disclaiming. Yeah. 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 Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you can see I am an unqualified realtor. <laughs> 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 Do not go out and <laughs> It's just another way that you can. It shouldn't be your number one way to do your business. How about the question of uh, can they use or do they have to use their own money? Is not using your own money a possibility? So this is, how many? Okay, so how many people have either read a book or got caught up on like a Facebook thing that says buy a house with no money of your own? Right. Yeah. TV. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. As seen on TV. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. Um, Okay, so how do I explain this? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't. The answer is no. Um, you always need some type of money in your pocket to go to settlement with. I mean, you guys are all real estate agents in here. You know there's closing costs involved. When you're talking about hard money or even soft money, whatever their terms are, you've got to pay points. You've got to bring that to settlement. Yeah. You've got transfer taxes. You've got to pay those, depending on how big your house is. Right. You've got homeowner's insurance for the house. You know, you, right. there's, there's title work. Yeah. Title policies. I mean, the list goes on with how much money you need to have yeah. um, available to go to settlement. So, 
the short answer is no. Um, you know, but in terms of like, well, can you get 100% funding for your purchase and your rental cost? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know. But yeah, exactly. All the other costs are still up to you, right? right? So you can't really flip a house with no money at all unless you just know someone so well that they're like, I don't care about any fee. You know, <laughs> kick it over me and I'll pay it. And, and I don't know anybody's going to do that. Yeah. Um, and how much money do you need? You know, and, and that's kind of like a catch-22 question also. It'll vary. It'll vary depending on what your purchase price is. You know, if you're going to start out smaller, um, you know, we're going to go through some numbers in a minute. But yeah. we needed almost $15,000 to buy To buy it. To buy the first house. Yeah. So it's not. just for the closing. Yeah. Just for the closing yeah. costs. Yep. Yeah. I mean, and he, he paid 100% of the purchase price. Right. So this so. is money that we had to have. We weren't getting the house if we didn't have it. Yep. Um, Anything else? No, I think that kind of covers the majority of that. And one thing that we, we did want to do now is kind of show you like what that actually looked like and, and do it on our very first flip for you guys. So what did our very first flip look like with all those numbers? So we call that kind of the, uh, the net, net, net scheme. Because, like for example, every time I talk to my contractor, I'm like, so what's, what's, what's the total, what's the net? And he'll tell me, and then like, you know, two weeks later, he gives me an updated bill. And then three weeks later, I get an updated bill again. So we call it the net, 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 because I want to know hard and fast, like down to the <coughs> penny, like what are we making, what are we paying? Um, and so we're going to go through that on our first one, which is off of Guilford Road, right here in Jessup. Yeah. And um, this is where I tell you not to listen to the HGTV mumbo jumbo either. Yeah. You, know, you bought a house for 100, you put 50 into it, you sold it for 200, and you made 50 grand. Wrong. You right. Grand. Um, you know, always, the net 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 concept talks about uh, your buy, hold, and sell, which, depending on you know your purchase price, again, can add up very, very quickly. Um, and you know, if you're not conscious of your buy, hold, and sell, you're not making any money. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's your profit, um, right? You know, your buying costs. You have your transfer taxes. You have your insurance, um, title work, yeah. property taxes, points. If you're using private money, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. You know, holding is pretty easy. You know, mainly it's going to be your interest payments and then your BG bill. You know, yeah. Pretty much. Um, and then your selling costs. So. You know you got to pay commissions, right? Right. Commissions. Right. Um, and yeah. one thing, go ahead. I was going to say, so one thing, like you would see on HGTV if you were watching one of their shows, and, and don't get me wrong, like we love HGTV, it's on all the time. Like, yeah. no, I can't sleep without it. Um, <laughs> but, like, for example, they would have in there where is the purchase price, it would be the only thing, so they would say purchase price, renovation cost, and sold for, where is that? <clears throat> right here. And you're thinking, oh, cool, they made $111,000. Man, time to go find another house to flip. You know? um, none of this crap is in there, right? That all goes in there. And you'll see here in a second how that 111 was nowhere near 111, right? So can, can you back up to where, how do you find the house? How to find the house? It's an online auction. So she hunted it down online. She was kind of stalking it. And these auctions, you know, obviously they have their deadlines. And she was just, just on it like prey. So the story of it was, you know, it, it was in Jessup, right? And it was off of Guilford Road. I don't know most of you should be familiar with Guilford Road. Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty busy street. Yeah. 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 Um, so it had been listed on Hubsu for 90 days or so, and nobody was bidding on it. And it flipped a traditional sale. So, I mean, I was bidding on it, but, you know. But it flipped to our traditional sales. And so I'm like, what is with this? Because it was right down the street from our townhouse. And so I Google mapped it. And if it was on Guilford Road, like right on it, I wouldn't have bought it. Yeah. yeah. It wouldn't um, have been near that. But value. I Google mapped it and it sat back off of the side street. A little private like, drive. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was a half acre lot. And the house was like 2,200 finished square feet. You know, a little brick rancher, 1,200 up, 1,200 down. Yeah. Um, this, by the way, is the house that she just dropped on me like that. This yeah. is the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, somebody's missing something here. Because we're right next to Fort Meade. I knew that because it wasn't on Guilford Road that I could probably push push a price real quick on it. You know, I could get a good resale on it. Um, but yeah, and this is how the net, net, net concept and how, anybody's heard of the magic formula? Have you guys read a book about or seen it on Yeah. Has anyone heard of like the formula that yeah. most investors use to flip a house? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, just running through the numbers real quick. 
We purchased Guilford Road for one sixty three seven ninety nine. Um, our buying cost totaled about fourteen thousand two hundred dollars. And then over here is where I broke down kind of what the fees were. So we paid sixty six ninety in points. Um, we paid fourteen hundred and thirty seven dollars for our homeowners insurance policy. Um, because remember, it's not your standard homeowner's insurance policy, it's still a risk policy, yes. so they're more expensive. More expensive. Right. Um, my transfer taxes and title work were $53.74, and then some other miscellaneous fees came out to $731. Um, so it so cost us $14,000 just to buy, just our, to buy it. our first list. Um, holding it, so these, these are the interest payments that I had to make to my lender at the time. Now, this was our first flip, and I mean, I'm, I was just happy that he gave us the money. Right? <laughs> right, so, right, right. But we paid three points and 12% interest yeah. on our first flip. Now we don't pay anything. Right, right, but, we don't pay anymore, but um, in order to get started, that's maybe where you have to start. Yeah, right. so 7,100 bucks for holding it. So 66.90 of that was in interest payments, and my fee bill over the course of the flip was about $450. Yeah. And then this big guy. Right. What yeah. was the time frame of? Just to sell. About 12 weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, at this point, we were we were licensed. Were we not? You were licensed. I was licensed, but not on the back. Yeah. Right. Buy. Right. Okay. Yeah. So at this point, we did save on the back end commission, but yeah. Right. Yeah, we did recapture some commission on the back end, but thirty-one thousand three hundred dollars was what it cost us to sell this house. They wanted three percent back. They wanted three percent back. It was a VA loan. And they needed the money for settlement. Well, I wanted to sell the house, so I said, take it. Right. <laughs> right. Um, commission, we gave 3% on this house. My split, or our split with our broker, you know, a lot of people forget about that, but depending on what the resale is, it's a big chunk. Yeah. Um, if you're not capped yet. Transfer taxes and title work was another thirty nine fifty two, and then homeowner's warranty was 450 bucks. So 30 grand it costs us to sell our beautiful flip. So what is that? 30. Forty-six. What is that? Almost fifty. Some, yeah, fifty dollars to buy and sell. Now, if you weren't thinking about that, that's your you profit. You just lost money, right? If you were thinking you're going to make yeah. fifty, you just lost two thousand dollars or whatever it turned out to be. If you followed HGTV's simplistic model, yeah. you missed it. <laughs> um, to renovate this house, it cost us one hundred and nine thousand dollars, close basically one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Yeah. To renovate it. Yeah, we can estimate them off of square footage, which yeah. will give us a base number, and then it really goes through a process of finalizing. Like if it gets through that, right? If we see a house we like, we know the area, and we base it off of square footage, and we get a number, and it passes that test, yeah. you know, and then we can kind of finalize it down to where we really need so, to be. And, um, fifty to fifty-five dollars. Oh, it's so what we kind of base. Yeah. Is what we average. Yeah. Um, for for, for, for our rental, yeah. for our pool, yeah. and don't make the mistake of not counting the basement. Oh yeah. So, Every, yeah, if you see on the tax record it says like 1,800 square feet and you don't count the basement, you will be wrong. Right. Mm. I mean 100%. It can, double, it can basically double your budget. Yeah, if it's a so, rancher, that's going to be another 1,800 below. Yeah. You're yeah. losing lots of money. Yeah. <laughs> if you know this number of how this works, you can pick up tons, tons. Just go on Facebook and go to the Baltimore Investing Group. Investors, I mean, they talk crap about real estate agents all the time because nobody knows how to do this. Yeah. If you know how to do it, you've got a repeat buyer for yeah. life. Yeah. They're a pain in the butt. All right, so we've got to get back on track for this yeah. one. Let's go through the actual like cost breakdown, now, like what you would see on the HGTV episode at the end, what they would actually show you that. Um, so here, we bought it for the 163 from 799 Our buy, hold, sell, and renovation was 162 174 so that put us all in for 325, all right? We bought, we sold it for 389.9, all in for 325, left us with a net, net, net complete profit of 63,927. That's one of our most successful flips, and it was our very first one because we did this. Look, okay. so if I go through the magic formula, right? Some of you are saying, well, maybe I don't have to do that. If I do this and follow it perfectly, 389,900, right? Times the 70% gives us 110 or minus 110 for the uh, renovation, it says we should have bought the house for 162,930. We paid 163, not even $1,000 off from where we should have bought it according to the formula. How do you know what you're going to sell it for? Well, that's where being a great realtor is, you know? <laughs> that's, Jennifer talked about it, but it's so true. Don't talk yourself into a good deal that's not one. Like, as a great realtor, you can look at comps, you know what it's going to sell for. And just kind of keep in the back of your mind, like pretend that you always had to bring it to someone else to look over it. 
there's tons of times where I'm like, hey, check out this great deal, you know, and I end up trying to make it sound like it's a great one just because I like the pictures and I think it's cool. Can I shut it down? And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that was just like, you know, I'm like, lose $30,000 on your right one. So it's not that this happens all the time. I definitely don't want to make it seem like, go out, right. guys, right. be profitable and tear it up. This is uncommon. However, when we followed the formula, it's amazing how close. We were less than $1,000 away from what we should have paid for it, and it left us with a big profit on our very first one. So yeah, guys, you know, last last couple things is Jen and I are totally glad that you guys came. Like I said, we, we're humbled, we're honored that you guys would let us do this. I know there are plenty of other people who could probably teach it better than that. However, I didn't bring out knives. <laughs> but what we would like to do, so this was a one, one hour, a little over an hour. What Jen and I kind of have the vision to do is to actually do not just a class, but like a workshop, like I was saying, and do fun things in there too, like where we can talk about all our huge blunders. Like I think that's an important part of it, not just the things we did well. We're not superhuman. Yeah, you know, like the permits. We have a huge issue with that. That was a huge blunder for us. Uh, clipping through, we can go into detail on that, like how we got so burnt so bad. Um, and then even just dealing with the county, we had a house where we literally fought the county for like nine months and we lost, right? Like we can teach you guys these things, so these are things you don't have to go through. I think something else that would be incredibly beneficial is anyone who comes to this workshop, like find a property that you think is a flip, right? Not something I think is a flip or I sent you. I want you to identify it. And then we'll go through the whole process like we talked about, and we'll find out whether you flipped a house or you flopped a house. You know, and, you, and here's the cool thing. You don't have to lose $60,000. You'll get the same education, right? Then I didn't get that. We just lost the $60,000 or whatever what. So we want to do that workshop. Hopefully, you know, we're going to talk to Mike Z and uh, uh, Jen and stuff like that and try to do that. But if we did that, would you guys come to it? Yeah. Would you guys do that? Yeah. Awesome. channel where literally we video like half the stuff we're doing like at one point literally a huge massive tree fell on one of our houses and that video is in there oh. it was when that hurricane or tornado. tornado came through literally this tree i'm not kidding you huge fell right in the middle of our house, we hadn't closed on the house yet. <laughs> like the reason why jennifer and i like flipping houses like and, and hopefully that comes off and why we're here and teaching you guys is because we've identified real estate as a vehicle to be able to basically like live the lives that we want to live right we want to be a good husband and wife, a good you know mother and father. We want to be really good at all these other key roles, and real estate allows us to do that. Flipping homes allows us to do that even more, right? So even if you're sitting here and you're like, man, I don't know if, if, if flipping houses is going to be for me, like I still challenge you to find that avenue, right? Because all of you, I don't want to be good people, want to do big things, want to live a life that's worth living. Like if this scares you, don't stop here though. Right? Keep that going. Hey, Jonah, would you invite us to one of your flips so you can see a quality flip? Those dude just hold it like an open house. Like, yeah. you just have every, everybody yeah. come through. I'm going to need a crap ton of cupcakes and water. We're <laughs> 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 to get a sponsor for that. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming here.